Nest World is your boy AJ back again. It's Nest Kingdom hashtag We Go Hard. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any breaking Nets news. And follow us on Instagram at Nets Kingdom 711 underscore. Follow us on Twitter at Nets Kingdom AJ. We going viral, viral on Twitter. Make sure you guys support. Follow us on Instagram. So, Nets Nation, there's some news that broke. So, we just got to talk about it. I mean, we just hired a coach, Kyrie's contract, and also Mike James. But first, I want to talk about Mike James. Now, Mike James, a 6'1 combo guard who gave the Nets some solid minutes at the end of the 2020-2021, returned to Europe. Now, he wants back what the news is. He wants back in the NBA, and he wants back in Brooklyn. Now, the Brooklyn Nets hold his NBA rights, permitting them to sign him to a vet minimum deal or something larger outside the salary cap. Um, let me read what Mike James said about the rumor. He said, I don't I don't know how to even take this rumor. Would I like to play alongside my friend Kevin? Yes, but I also like to play alongside my 10 other of my close friends. Some play in the NBA, some play in Europe. Now, Mike James played 13 games with one start in 2020, 2021, averaging 7 points and 4 assists with shooting splits of 37, 36, and 76 from the line in 18 minutes per game. He played in nine postseason games as well, but only sparingly. Steve Nash didn't give him that many minutes. So Mike James wants to come back. I know a lot of people on that Twitter say he's too small. He's another small guard. Um, I actually do really like Mike James. Now I think about Mike James. He is a really, really great point guard. Besides his height, he just really knows how to facilitate. Um, I feel like he could be a backup point guard for us, but in my in my opinion we have there's other mark point guards on the market right now that we should shoot for before we bring mike james back i feel like mike james should be on the list but wait until we get into the austin rivers delon Wright, you know the other guys in the free agent market we should see if we can get those guys first before we bring back back mike james but overall I actually really love like I really love how Mike James plays with pace. He's a facilitator. He can be a playmaker, you know. He can we know he's a bucket, he can score. So, it depends, you know. And a lot of people kind of bring up Mike James height and the Celtics, but the Celtics play Peyton Pritchard and he's he looks like I think he might be even shorter than Mike James. So, it really just depends on the rotations that Steve Nash puts out there, you know? It's just depending how you you line up Mike James and put him in the right spots, put him in the right rotations to play with us, you know? So, let me know how you guys feel about Mike James coming back. Would you guys take Mike James back? Is he too small? You don't want no small guards? Let me know in the comments how you guys feel about Mike James. Now, let's talk about Kyrie. So, the news broke um, a couple of days ago about the New York Post writing that all signs pointed to Kyrie coming back on a long-term deal. Now, let me read what it says. Brian Lewis says here, it says, as far as a contract, I probably try to get him back at an annual rate at what he's currently making. They could give him a contract below the max with unlikely incentives that allows him to reach the max. Unlikely incentives are capped at 15% of a player's salary in a given year, so they can make his salary 15% less than the max, then give incentives to allow him to get the full max. He would have to opt out and negotiate a new contract with new incentives. So, like I said, as I thought when I told you guys before, the, the deadline is June 29th, so you're going to start to hear murmurs of um, Kyrie coming back, certain deals that he's going to take. Um, in my opinion, I think Kyrie is going to opt out and sign a four year, I'll say maybe like 184 kind of max. I think it'll be a four year 184, but that's just my opinion. Now, if the Nets, the Nets could put incentives in there, like they could cap it and say, Kyrie, I talked about this before, make, um, put incentives to him playing 60 games or 50 games, whatever it is. So the money activates the next year. So we'll see if the, if Kyrie, uh, takes the deals of incentives and opt outs, you know, of uh, player options. So then let's see if the Nets kind of push back and give Kyrie more player options to protect themselves for Kyrie missing games. But we all know, I told us before, we were, I told us in the beginning of the season, we're married to Kyrie Irving. He's going to be here. Just get used to it. I know people don't want to extend him, but he's going to get extended. So get used to um, Kyrie. And, you know, 
I'm always for Kyrie coming back in 7-11. So let me know in the comments how you guys feel about the possibility of Kyrie signing a four-year, five-year extension. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. Now, last but not least, the Brooklyn Nets have hired Igor Kokoskov. Kokoskov. Excuse me, all my Serbians. I, I, I hopefully I said it right. But yeah, we the Mavericks assistant coach Igor Kokoskov has been hired by the Brooklyn Nets to assist Steve Nash. Like I told you guys before, our assistant coaches have been fired, so we're rebuilding our coaching staff. Now we we look at Igor's uh, history. He came from Jason Kidd's coaching staff. He's a he's a great play caller. He has a creative play calling mind. Uh, he has 30 years of coaching experience overseas and in the NBA. He has a handful of connections to the Nets. He served as an assistant coach 2008 to 2012 when Nash played in Phoenix. Then he served in a ser- um, then he served on the Cavs 2013 to 14 when Kyrie was in Cleveland. Okay, so he was he was on the assistant coaching staff when Kyrie was in Cleveland. A lot of people don't know that. Um, he was the head coach of the Slovenia Cinderella national team that won gold in the 2017 FIBA Eurobasket. There, he coached Nets free agent guard Goran Dragic and Luka. Uh, he actually worked with fellow our 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 stash Nikola Mulatinov, the seven footer. He's worked with him, um, and also he has. Let's see, he was also the head coach of the Suns for one season. He was also been an assistant for the Clippers, Pistons, where he won an NBA title. Suns, Cavs, Magic, Jazz, Kings, and Mavs. He was the first European-born NBA assistant. Hired by the Clippers in 2000 and first European born head coach when he was hired by the Suns in 2018, but then he got fired in 2019. He left the Kings in 2020, but there were reports that the Nets reached out to him, but he decided to become the head coach of Fermanis and Turkey instead of coaching on the Nets. And after a year there, he returned to the U.S. with the Mavs, calling plays for Jason Kidd and was an assistant. So again, um, it's a good it's a good hire, you know, it's a good hire. Coach Igor has a lot, a lot of coaching experience. He has a lot of coaching experience. I know Nets fans are upset because we didn't get Phil Handy and some of these other coaches that are on the market, but we gotta give credit to this was actually a decent hire. You know, Coach Igor has a very, very creative play calling mind. Um I'm interested to see what he does in the um play calling for us. Now, the Mavs' offense was very ISO-dominated with Luka, but we'll see. Can Igor adjust with our offense? You know, I would love to see more ball movement in our offense. I know ISO is not going to go away anytime soon, but it's just installing ISO at the right times, giving us more of a play-calling motion kind of offense instead of just a stagnant, you know, ISO ball offense. Hopefully, Coach Igor... Um, can adapt and be creative. Cause like I said, he's he's had so many years of coaching. So him playing, calling plays for us uh, offensively, I just hope it works out. I hope he can help Steve Nash. Um, well, we just you know what it is. The team has to buy in. You know, the team has to buy into his philosophy. When he gets here in training camp, he got to set his plays, set our offense, and we have to buy into what he is, what his offense is. You know, and if we do that. And he's successful. We'll see. You know, a lot of people are giving him credit that he's a, a genius and a play calling genius. We'll just have to wait and see how he um, he fixes our offense. You know, a lot of our half court offense it was just too stagnant. It just didn't look like we had the chemistry or the knowledge of play calling that that was needed to take us far in the playoffs. So hopefully Coach Igor does work. You know, hopefully Coach Igor does work. Like I said, he has plenty of experience. So I'm excited to see what he does. Let me know in the comments how you guys feel about Coach Igor. Let me know in the comments how you guys feel. Was it a good hire? Do you guys do you guys believe in Coach Igor? Let me know in the comments. But that's all the next news I have for y'all today. Make sure you guys hit that like button for me. Um, next up, I will be dropping the free agent target video. So stay tuned for that. Um, again, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, follow us on TikTok. We're going viral. It's Nest Kingdom. It's your boy, AJ. I'm out.